Hi, I want to talk to you about your dirty little mind like you've never heard it explained before. All right, I know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking something totally different by dirty mind. So are you ready? This is going to blow your mind. It's worthy of a Nobel Prize, I think you'll agree. And it will make you feel so good. It's amazing. Have you noticed in this world, uh, this, in the last few years in particular, that there's a lot of stinking thinking? Have you noticed that? Most people have, that people are just short, they're on edge, all that. Well, I think I have the answer, at least part of the answer, a good part of the answer. And that is something I read the other day, and that is, is that our cerebral, their cerebro, spinal fluid we have about four ounces of it in our in our body at any given time just four ounces however our body makes four times that amount well it has to go somewhere right because otherwise our head would be this big in a week right and it's not it's basically the same size so what is it doing and where is it going and and why is this so important to having a dirty mind and having stinking thinking. It's really amazing. So stay tuned. Here's, and I'm gonna show you how to fix it instantly. To start fixing it within a second or two, and it'll just keep fixing itself as time goes on. So, the fluid, which is, it envelops the entire outer surface of the brain. There's actually two layers on the so tops and the sides, and I'm not sure about the bottom, it might just be one layer, but there's a pool of, of the fluid there, right? And so what is it doing? Well, one of its major jobs is that it clears out the waste product that's in our brains. You know, just like if we eat food, there's a certain amount of waste product that we urinate out, or defecate out, right? And also the cells, you know, they, they use up what they have, and then the, it's transmitted back into the veins ends up going through the kidneys and being, you know, the bladder and being urinated out, right? All this waste product. Well, you wouldn't want to keep the, your waste product around, would you? I don't know anybody that does unless they're a farmer <laughs> and they want to have an organic uh, compost. But anyway, it's, it's kind of nasty, right? So we don't want that. We want to keep things clean. And particularly we want to keep our brains clean and that's what that fluid is doing. It's removing all of that junk that's no longer useful. It's not really junk unless it stays there. If it stayed there, it'd be like having, you know, um, something in your refrigerator, whether it's a piece of fruit or a piece of meat. If it sat around too long, it would be kind of funky, right? Right. So this, it's, it's a lymphatic system that clears it out. The, uh, the medical profession has a special name for it because it's a little bit different looking, I guess, than a, the normal lymphatic. It's called glymphatic because we have glial cells and lymphatic, so it's sort of a combination of that. So it's cleaning out all that junk. That's what the lymph does. It's a garbage pit, is your lymph system. It's, it's three times the size of your blood vessels. All right? It's a big deal. So. We got, so it's cleaning it out and then it, it transfers it down to the lymph here and then it goes through the heart. I'm not sure if it goes to the lungs or not. Uh, maybe, uh, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, and then it, it, it gets transferred to the kidneys. Uh, yeah, so I guess it gets it, yeah. So anyway, I'm not sure the physiology exactly if it's you know, partially in the vein, veins and partially in the arteries. But in any case, it's, it's getting cleaned out all the time and that's why we urinate every day and you know go to the bathroom so here's the thing what what is it that moves the fluid in there because if it sat there it would become stagnant right and and there aren't many stagnant ponds that are or le and lakes that are very attractive so we don't want that <clears throat> and you can imagine that after a while maybe i don't know for sure but it just might have an odor Right, because these are maybe dead cells that are being washed out. Because that's what the lymph does. It takes out the, the big stuff. It's too, too, too big for the veins. 
So it's washing out those dead cells. You know, and, and if dead cells accumulated in our brain, it would get kind of smelly, right? And, oh, by the way, we have these lymph... Uh, 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 no, we don't. So let me back up. I'm thinking ahead of myself. So, so what's moving the fluid? They're called cilia. And cilia are tiny hair-like things. They're one hundredth the diameter of a human hair. And there's a bunch of them. And they're in the brain, in this third ventricle. And they move in, you know, in, in concert with each other to move the fluid. What activates them? It's activated by ions. And this was proven back in the 60s. The ions make this stuff move. If it's exposed, if they're exposed to negative ions, like if you go to the ocean or you go deep in the woods or by a waterfall, it'll speed them up. And, and you'll notice that when that happens, you feel great. So we want it to go f faster rather than slower. The average speed is about 900 beats a minute. But it's nice to get it up to 1,000 or 1,100, you know? Um, if it slows down, by the time it gets to 600, they, these cilia get gluey. And I don't know if it produces glue from inside the cilia or if it's just because it's stagnant. Don't know, don't care. But they get glued together and then they start going this way, that way, or not at all. They're not moving. So depending on how slow it's going determines how much of that uh, dish, dirty dishwater we have floating around in our brain. It also floats around, you know, we have cilia in our nostrils, we have them in our ears, we have them in our eyes. If they slow down for your eyes, you can get glaucoma because the pressure builds up. Because that's what they do, it moves the fluid out of your eyes. We have them in our, well, women have them in their ovaries, we have them in our pancreas, in the bronchial tubes. There's probably other places that I'm not familiar with, but they're moving the fluid. And it, anywhere the fluid is slowed down, that could be a problem area. So maybe if you have stuffy sinuses, that could be part of the reason. So we want that stuff to move. And negative ions, which are high by the ocean, they're high in the, in the forest, they're high by waterfalls, is what we want. And, but in the last many years, and it's gradually increased, you know, the cell phone started, I don't know, let's say 2000, not, that's not really, somewhere around that, general vicinity, right? And that's when Alzheimer's started to increase. From 2000 to 2015, Alzheimer's deaths increased by 55%. That was nine years ago when they stopped the study. I don't know what it is today, but it keeps going up, 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 up. And it was, it, we, at 2015, we didn't have 5G yet. We do now. And they put out repeating frequencies and so, do, so does your smart meters in your home. I call them smart beaters. They put out AC and DC, direct current and alternating current, and they spike every few seconds. Goes, when it spikes, it goes, goes out. And it's like a phone that's ringing that won't stop ringing. But it's at such a tiny level, you don't notice it. You don't hear it. But you're inside the tiny little parts of your body, like the cilia, and your microtubules, they feel it because it's, it's, and it's interfering with the regular flow of what we want from the sun, which is irregular waves, irregular production of this stuff. Beautiful music, you know, it's irregular. Irregular, but not regular, like a bandwidth that, you know, uh, the, the cell, the telecom companies have a particular bandwidth that they're using. Boom, 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 boom. It goes on 24 hours a day. So it's, it's not only making you feel irritated, but it's slowing down the cilia in your brain so that you've got swamp water in there. So you've got dirty thoughts. See, I told you. I told you we talked about this differently. So how do you get the dirty thoughts out of your brain? How do you get the stinking thinking out of your brain? Not just you, but your, your family members, your children, your, your parents, your relatives, your, your neighbors, everybody, the people you work with, the people you dri you know, are driving along the side of the road with, they're driving like maniacs, right? Or maybe they're driving too slow because you know, they're not thinking straight, right? 
and by the way, uh, nursing homes have increased in population uh, every year. It just in the last, from between 2022 and 2023, it went up another 100,000. And uh, most of those people, uh, it, at least the ones I've been into, almost all of them have Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. So, and it takes four shifts to, to man a facility because it's 168 hours in a, in a week. So you've got probably, when you total all that up, it's gonna be about one person per person there right and it's increasing 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 they're expecting another 50 60 percent increase in the next six years and so that's more people having to take care of people who cannot take care of themselves and it, that just includes like the nurses and the cnas you know what have you but there's also people that cook their food the people who wash their clothes the people who bring the food up to them the, the, you know, there's management decisions that have to be made. There's interactions with the doctors. The doctors have to prescribe drugs. People make those drugs. So we're talking about millions and millions of people who are involved in trying to take care of this. And it's increasing and increasing and increasing to the point where it's already becoming a problem. In addition to the ones who are in nursing homes, there, there's probably an equal number or more of, of family members who are taking care of their aged uh, parents and and some of them need to bring in a nursing home but you know how, how that goes it's, it's it takes a while it, it, you know for that to happen because there's a lot of emotions involved and et cetera et cetera so so it's a huge huge factor but it's not just Alzheimer's and dementia everybody and there are about eight billion people on the planet right now everybody is being exposed to these repeating waves and the and the positive ions from them everybody so there are eight billion people who have some level of pollution going on in their brain so even people who eat pristine are having some of that going on and so nobody everybody nobody's exempt we all have this so what do we do about it well thank goodness it's simple to deal with this. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do it that you can do on your own. You don't have to buy anything from me. You just need to go to your hardware store or, or whatever. You wanna get copper wire. And this copper wire is already twisted, but you take your copper wire, one that isn't twisted, the energy flows only in one direction on a copper wire. But, when you fold it in half, like this one has been, you see the, see if you can see the loop there. Uh, I'm not sure what the best background. Let me try my shirt. You can see it there. Uh, so I bent it in half. And then I took a power drill like this. All you gotta do is loosen this up so that the bent end can fit in there. Is this the bent end? I can't, I don't have my glasses on. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the bent end. And you stick it in there. You fold it in half, right, or bend it in half. You stick that in there. And you tighten it up. You know, you just do that by turning this thing back and forth. And then you gently, using your fingers, it's gonna take a little practice. You just let it go like that until the wire starts to buckle. You'll see it twisting, twisting, twisting. And and the heavier the gauge, the better. And the heavier gauges are the lower number rather than the higher number. And so you're going to keep twisting. I've been using this for something else, so it's a little bit bent out of shape. But uh, then you take that and you tape it with clear masking or clear packing tape on the top side of your fan blade. People asking which end should they stick in. I think the rounded end that it is the one you want to put near the center. I could be wrong on that. It's not that big of a deal. And on the end, you might need to snip it, you know, because it's hard to bend pl uh, copper and get it even. Uh, that's fine. And so you're going to tape this on there. You've already measured it. So, and when, by the time you twist it, it's going to be a little bit shorter. That's fine. 
and you tape it on there and you turn it on and you let it run 24 hours a day. If it's too cold, you can either do, you can either reverse the fan with many fans so it doesn't feel so cold, or you just leave it on when you're not in the room because it will go through mountains, walls, and windows. And the reason this works, you know, I mentioned that the energy on, on an untwisted copper wire is just going in one direction. But when you bend it and you twist it, now those ions are banging against each other constantly along the entire length. That creates frequencies of the, the beautiful frequencies, the ones that are irregularly shaped of beautiful music. And then when you put it on a ceiling fan and it's spinning, it's using the, the, what they use in the hydroelectric plants. They spin the copper and it enables them to send the electricity you know, 500 miles or more, like from the Hoover Dam to parts of California. Um, now, we don't have magnets involved here, so we don't generate electricity. We don't want electricity. We just want the frequencies. So you're generating a bunch of, electric, uh, of frequencies. My neighbors, who used to argue, I'd hear them half the time walk out the door, I'd hear them arguing in the house across the road, it's about, I don't know, 60, 70 yards away, uh, inside their house, I'd hear them. When I set this up, it was actually a prototype that was going slower. It was a record player, which is about a third the speed, had it set up. And in the next two years, I heard him argue twice. And I think everybody's entitled to argue once a year. So it had an effect. They didn't know that they were feeling irritated by the, by the, the, the repeating frequencies that they're being exposed to. So by doing this, not only will it, it get rid of the irritation, it will get rid of the smog that's in your brain and in your nose and in your ears and elsewhere. If we do this, and I can tell you that if you're paying attention and you take a note of how you're feeling emotionally and mentally, when you turn it on, you'll probably notice within a couple of seconds or so how you just feel something better. You feel more relaxed. People tell me when they do this, they sleep better that night and they feel energized the next day because they don't have the smog in their brain. So this is a really good idea. And um, oh, one person wrote, they had roommates, housemates. They said that the arguing in the house uh, went away. So it was much, they're having a much better time. And it goes through the walls, like I said, with my neighbors. Um, it, and I didn't mention uh, autism, but I have used this a couple, of, a couple of occasions where one child started acting out and uh, in the back seat of my car and was pushing down the seat of the car while we're driving. This was after Hurricane Michael. About eight years old, he had autism. And uh, the mother said that normally he, once that pattern starts, he just freaks out. And these were people I didn't know. I was helping, you know, taking them places in the car after the storm, right? So, they, you know, we weren't, we didn't know each other real well. Anyway, so the child was just losing it. Well, I pulled out my little uh, whirling bliss machine, which is based on the same principles as this, and started spinning it, and within a few seconds he calmed down, his mother was blown away. So, if, if you have any children with, with uh, autism, uh, check this out and see, see what kind of results you get and let us know. Let us know, you know, were they a 10 before or 12 before, and now they're an 8, and maybe they're a 7. You know, it makes life easier, doesn't it, if that happens. So let's, let's find out. I'm sure that if however many millions of children there are in the United States with, with autism, it would be great to find out, uh, you know, if we could bring that down, maybe 50%. I don't know. We've got to find out. You see, I don't, I'm not a researcher. I'm an inventor. And so it's up to you. If you want to research this to prove it to yourself, go right ahead. I'm just inviting people to do this. Take the risk of, of getting yourself some copper wire, twisting it, and putting it on your ceiling fans. And what we're going to see in this world, since we've got 8 billion people with polluted brains, we're going to see that pollution being cleared out, cleared out, cleared out. So their brains are going to start working better. They're not going to be as irritated. They're not, they're not going to fall for junk like, you know, 
that people are falling for now. So and this includes every occupation, even people who are in government. This will start to clear things out. They'll start to see things more clearly and make better decisions. And I'm not going to say what the better decisions is. I'm pretty sure you know what they are. You have your own ideas. Well, let's get this, the brains working so that there, there's clarity. And if, and if they make wrong decisions, which everybody does, I make a mile every day, we can course correct. We can correct it. We'll go, oh, I made that decision, but it's not working out. And we can fix it the same day, the next day, or whatever. And so the world is going to be fantastic. And there's more to this. I, I want you to watch my other videos so that you can learn more about it. But I think this is not, you know, this is good enough. This is worthy of a Nobel Prize. If we can reduce Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia by 25 or 50 percent, maybe more, that would be a really good thing because it's such a demanding thing and such a heartbreaking thing. And, and I think most of us are just as afraid of Alzheimer's as we are of cancer. So let's go ahead and do this. Go out to your store, go to your hardware store because Walmart, at least my Walmart, only has 18 gauge and that's real thin. If that's all you have, go ahead and put it up there and then in the next few days go out and get a heavier gauge and put it up there because every bit helps and we need this immediately because things are really going south fast. You know, it, it, there's just so many things going on. So I'm, you know, used to be the kinds of crazy things that go on you'd hear about a couple times a year maybe. And then, and then it started gradually increasing where, you know, you know, like, uh, I mean, when I was in school, in grade school, high school, I think there were two mass killings that made the news. Uh, Richard Speck and the, and the Texas Tower. The Texas Tower guy had a brain tumor they found, and Richard Speck was on drugs, heavy duty drugs. Very few. Nowadays, we hear about these kinds of things every week. And a lot of them don't even make the news because you have to have at least four dead in order for it to make the news. That's the criteria for a mass shooting. Um, you could have 15 people shot, you know, like the shooting wasn't very accurate, and there was only one or two dead. But that's going on all the time. And so we can, we can alleviate a lot of that, that people will feel more capable because they'll be able to make better decisions. And, 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 and if you watch my other videos, you'll see how we're going to turn this world into a series of gardens of Eden and then eventually it will just be one great big garden of Eden. We've had one before, we can always make more with God's help. Well you take care, thank you for listening. Be sure to share this video. Be sure to like it and subscribe because I have other uh, other stuff and you want to be you want YouTube to tell you about it so that you can catch it. And and the stuff is free, right? I'm just giving it to you for free. Well, you've been great, <laughs> and uh, you take care, and God bless.